there has to be a balance. We know we are living in a time in which we don't have to ride camels, we don't have to ride horses, we don't have to eat barley and just bread all day. We know we have refrigerator and pantry, we know that, okay? But, we are still Muslim citizens, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so, when you, that's to tell you, when you're developing friendship, do not develop it for in vain, you know, for just any kind of reason, but have a thought in mind that this will this friendship that I'm developing I'm developing it for Allah's reward right and in according to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's way because this is our job that we practice the Quran we're not just allowed to recite and not practice we have to practice Allah hates those who say what they do not practice so Friendship that way, all right? You want friends to help you get closer to Allah, to help you remember Allah. You want friends who will not have a problem with you saying, it's time to pray. It's time to give zakah. Yeah, why? You, you don't want friends that are going to say, you got to go read your Quran. Oh, that's so boring. No, you want friends to say, oh, you're going to go read Quran? Can I read with you? Yes, this is it. As you get older again, you're going to have older friends. And if they don't like Quran, they don't like Allah, they are your friends, you, you're also part of them. Why not? You're friends. That's what friends are. Friends are there for each other, right? Yeah. Right? Friends like each other. Do they? Yeah. Yes. Friends like each other. Friends love each other. And that's why whatever your friend is into, you're into it too. So be careful. Right? Many people are influenced by shaitan. Most people do not believe. Most people do not know. Most people do not care. Most people are losers because they don't know themselves. They don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they lost their identity. They have no purpose. Allah said they are lost. If you become friends without being conscious of Allah, you're going to be lost with them too. You just put it in that class. Okay? Um, so that's when it comes to friends. Right? Yeah. And then the next thing was what? School? Yeah. So, think about something very, very, very important. When you go to school, is school coming to you also, or just you're going to school? You're going to school. You're going to school. What do you mean school coming to you? Well, like well, I mean, do you actually see the building coming to your home? Oh, no. We see work coming from school home. Okay. Yeah, all right. No, 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 no. We get you. That's why we said the building. Okay? In other words, the school institution needs you more than you need it. This is the truth, okay? If you want to know the real truth, if everybody decided that they were going to stay home, the school will not be there. The building will not be there. What do you need the building for if everybody's going to stay home? Try to make your fortification at home. Build yourself at home. Do not allow school or whatever it is that generates today, yesterday, or later on to influence you of living your, your, what, your Islam, your deen in your home. When you go to school, fine, go to school. Do the work. The assignments, do what you're supposed to do. But when you come home into the sanctuary of your home, practice your deen. Make your salahs, make your dhikr. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. When you walk into your home, immediately you know you have a dua you're supposed to say. Immediately when you walk in, before you leave, you have a dua that you're going out to battle with the Iblisi forces out in the area that are what? Not saying salams, don't care about the rights, don't care about the Islam, do not care about the Quran. You're already going to face them. Talking about all type of distraction, all type of different, different, different things that are so not righteous. Right? So before you leave, you have to take your dua with you. When you go out, Allah Ta'ala enabled no accident. Allah Ta'ala enabled no killing, no mass shootings, right? Allah Ta'ala enabled no, no what? No humiliation. 
He enabled you to come back safe and sound. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. When you enter the house, you say dua. When you enter the house, you say Bismillah. You say Assalamu Alaikum. You say Alhamdulillah. And when you go into the restroom, when you go to eat. But if you bring that school to you, when you and Wasi see each other at home, you and your dad or your mom say, Hi, bye. Before you eat, ah, you just start eating. You go into the restroom. You don't say no dua. You come out. You don't say no dua. You don't make istinja. You brought to school to you. And school needs you more than you need it. Does that make sense to you? So why now when it's time to utilize the weapon of all weapons, the knowledge of all knowledges, the means of all means in your own sanctuary, you say, I have school. Where is school? Does that make sense? So you have to, you know, you have to say astaghfirullah for that. Yeah, a lot of people have been using this busy. Do you have busy in there too? What? Did you put the busy, the word busy in your paper? No. Ah, you, you, you sure? <laughs> there's not the single word, there's not a single word of busy there. Are you sure? Do you have busy in your paper? Did you say busy with school? Somebody said busy. I things to do such as school that I can't delay. Things to do such as school that you can't delay. You know what? I'm going to dispute that. I'm going to dispute the fact that you cannot delay on the basis that whatever grade you're going to next, you're currently being delayed from it. Mm-hmm. Are you in 12th grade? You're being delayed from going to 12th grade. Oh, I was born later. It doesn't matter when you were born. They're delaying you from going. You are being delayed from going to 12th grade. But I'm not supposed to. Yeah, I'm not supposed to. <clears throat> right? What? I'm right? What? Right? What? I don't get it. Yeah. There are things with school that we cannot delay. Right? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that what you said? But actually being in 12th grade, you are delaying it, aren't you? It is being delayed for you to go to 12th grade. Why aren't you in 12th grade? That's your delay. That, that's what 12th grade said. Quran says you can, you can read the whole Quran. You don't have to be in 12th grade. Where's the delay? The knowledge of the Quran is better than the knowledge that you're achieving at school. Who's delaying? You don't know who's delaying? Who's delaying you from, from going to 12th grade? Your age? Yeah. Yeah, and it's the norm that you be in the grade that you're in, and then you move on to the next grade, right? Technically. And specifically, you're being delayed by going to that next grade by being in the grade that you're in. It's a delay. It still is a delay. What do you mean? You have to be in that grade to learn. To go to the next grade. Yeah. That's the delay. You were delayed in the late in the earlier grade, so you can go to the later grade. It's a delay. So. There are things with school that I cannot delay. You're being delayed from going to the next grade. Period. Too bad. If you say that, you know, don't, here's, here's, here's what I'm going to tell you all about this, okay? And I'm going to take it from the, from the Sahabas. I'm going to take it from the Sahabas. Um, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said that do not be regretful of what missed you. Because if it was meant for you, if it was decreed for you, it would have never missed you. Do not be regretful about that, but be regretful of what you did not do to prepare you for the akhirah. Be regretful about that. Be mindful about that. I did not get the best grade. I did not get the best recommendation. I did not get the best notice. I did not get the best award. These things, if they were really meant for you, you would have received them. I would have received them. So don't be torn up about it. Don't be regretful of the fact that you did not get it. But be regretful of the moments that you're spending and you're not preparing for your akhirah. Be regretful about that. Because for sure, 
That day is going to come and every last one of us are going to wish we had obtained more of the righteous deeds than deeds that were in vain, that did not do anything for us. So I think that, I think that, uh, yes, any questions on that? No. No, teacher. Can I ask a different question? Oh, no. Go ahead, please. I'm not going to ask him that. Do you want to? No, you want to. I'm not asking him that. Uh, okay, so you know, like, when the first people came? What people? What first people? Like, the first people who were men, right? The first people who were men. Men. Made. Made. Yeah. Made. Okay, so I'm pretty sure, I don't know, but the Quran wasn't there. So what did they follow? Like, what did they do? The first people who were made, what did they do because the Quran was not there? Yeah, like how did, like what, like what did they do? This is a very good question, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of baffled that you do not know the first people and where they came from. Okay. Who were the first people? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Yeah. But who was the first person? Adam. Adam. All right. And where was Adam created? Earth? No. Adam was created yeah. and he was set in Al Jannah. Adam lived in Jannah. Okay. But he was lonely. Okay. All right. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew he was lonely. Okay. And he woke up one morning and he turned around and he saw his wife, Eve. Okay, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created Eve from Adam. We had taken a portion of Adam to use it to make Eve. Now, uh, they are in Jannah, Allah ta'ala created them. They did not have the Quran. Yeah. Where do we get this story from? What? The Quran? What, we, what I just told you, yeah, yeah. the Quran. Yeah, yeah. The Quran tells us this story. Yeah. Okay, now, to answer specifically what did they do and how did they do it, mm -hmm. does it make sense to you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates and not guides? No. Okay, I mean now, when it did come to him being descended upon the earth, Mm -hmm. Do you realize that Allah Ta'ala had already taught him what he did not teach angels? Allah taught Adam in heaven what he did not even teach the angels. Do you know that? No. Okay, you need to know these things. That's why. Know your Quran. This is in the Quran itself. So they had children, but they knew who Allah Ta'ala was. Allah gave them guidance. Allah gave them wisdom. The children. Allah gave it to Adam is the first prophet of Islam. Yeah. In Islam... Right? The first prophet to work on to walk the face of this earth is Prophet Adam, and he is the, the forefather of all of us. My forefather, your forefather, all comes from Adam and Eve. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Allah Ta'ala sent him as his representative on the earth. He did not leave him in vain. He was the first prophet. He was given revelation. Right? The Quran was the final revelation to be given. But from the Prophet Adam والسلام, being the first Prophet to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers, prophets to remind the people none is worthy of worship except Allah, just like Adam was saying. And that there will be a final messenger who will come at the end of time, just like Adam والسلام, said. But the Prophet Muhammad salam, is the seal of all prophets. There's no prophet after him. And the Quran is a seal of all revelations. There's no revelations after it. And the, the time of Prophet Muhammad abrogates all other times. Meaning that a person cannot live today during the era of Prophet Muhammad salam, and say that I follow Prophet so and so. Because Allah said... The Prophet Muhammad is the sealing of prophets. 
What are you going to do if the house does not have a ceiling? Is it complete? No. No, most likely not. What do you mean most likely no. not? No. Give me a house that does not have a ceiling, that does not have any type of protection on top. Of course, some people are going to try and imagine, yeah, I have a big, gigantic balloon on top. No, no, no. No ceiling. That still is considered a ceiling. All right? So you can't do that. If you do that, that means you're rejecting the final message, the message that abrogates. How does it abrogate? It clarifies what is true of all prior revelations and refute all that was tampered with it and is false of it. All right? Do you know that? Now, does that answer your question? Yeah. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. There we go. All right. Yes. Any other questions for you is truly yeah. before we, I mean, yes. What? No, it's kind of like it's not related. It's not related. really related. It's not related. Nah, I'll ask you later. Everything is related. So go ahead. What is the question? It's actually really not. <laughs> is is it about cartoons? No. No. It's about an actual human being. All right. You don't have to mention any names, but let's hear what happened. No, like it's you know, he's movie. been on like podcasts, and like sometimes he says good he's things. Like, bro, be quiet. He says sometimes, sometimes he says good things about like Islam, but then sometimes he doesn't. Do you know who that is? He's bald. Okay. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. Our effort on social media, it is not against or for any single individual. It is not against, it is not for any single individual you see on social media, whoever has appeared on the TV shows and all of that. So, what is it for? Is for Quranic reform, understanding the Quran, education of the Quran. It's a Quranic awakening, revolutionary, civil revolution, professionally done to enable the students who are sincere in learning it to benefit, to benefit. And we ask only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we accord his mercy, and that's it. So, if we, when we do come across, because yeah. Yeah, there has been, then we let them have it. You know, we let them have it like, you know, what you're talking about. Um, and unfortunately, because of, you know, the, the unbiased uh, means or the unbiased method, a lot, even, a lot, e even some big time Muslim, you know, scholarly, you know, professionally uh, credited today, we got, an, I've, I've had to, I mean, you know, so somebody said that, one of them said that, you know, uh, a non-Muslim was, uh, was prepared for a janazah. Yeah, a janazah is the, sung, the, 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 the ghusl that you give to a deceased. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Right? And the prayer that you give to them. This is a janazah. This is salatul janazah. The other one is a, a janazah ghusl. You know? I mean, how can a non-Muslim be given that? By another non-Muslim. It's impossible. They were both non-Muslims. How could they give a Muslim burial to a non-Muslim. They didn't even know Islam, right? So some of them said something like that. And then another, another big time one of them is saying, practically, that all of the religions are one. But Allah says in the Quran, there's only one religion that I accept, and that is Islam. So if that's the only one he accepts, how is everybody else the same as that? It cannot be. The Qur'an does enough for us. We have enough content. We don't have to go out there looking for the bald head guy or his cousin. And that's it. Wassalam. I don't know who he is. You know? Why, why should I need to know oh, of someone who might or might not say the right things when I have the example of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the lights of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and Umar ibn al-Khattab and Uthman ibn Affan and Ali ibn Abi Talib and Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas and Sa'id ibn Zayd and Talha ibn Ubaidullah and, 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 uh, and Abd rahman ibn Awf the Ashar Mubashirin Why would I do that when I have the mother of the believers like Sayyidina uh, uh, Khadija 
سيدنا أم الكلثوم سيدنا رقية سيدنا عائشة why would I leave the likes of them and go to the likes of some bald headed guy who <laughs> might say right sometimes might not say right the other times might do this next day you know we have to be smart this is useless search or useless time being spent that way you know don't waste your time like that but look into the Quran you have the Quran work with that I think that that wraps it up for us I think inshallah you know you have plenty of resources you have plenty of um, you know means that you can go through in order to do the recitation on your own right but tomorrow is going to be a very very hefty recitational exercise well, if I were you, I would go through everything. Just go through every yeah, go go yeah. Tomorrow I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put it down, sis. Gonna, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be everything. I mean, just study everything, study all your surahs, memorization, recitation, your tajweed rules, all of that. Go through any videos that may help you. I don't know. It's what I've been trying to teach you for the past year or so, and I'm gonna be taking some tallies on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You sure? What? Yeah. Allahumma salli. Allahumma salli. Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammadin. Wa barik wa salamu alayhi. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين.